Our guest today is the academic and activist Angela Davis. Her remarkable life journey is chronicled in a recent documentary, Free Angela and All Political Prisoners, directed by Shala Lynch. Philosophy professor Angela Davis admitted that she is a member of the Communist Party. Hoover put her on the top ten. Everybody had a file on it. Her first lecture drew 2,000 students. Angela's education is now being put into practice. Angela Davis purchased four guns. There is a conspiracy in the land. It's a conspiracy to wipe out the black community as a whole. Well, I think she's trying to overthrow our system of government, and she admits that. The actions of the FBI in apprehending Angela Davis are rather remarkable story. A U.S. District Court judge set bail at $100,000. She knows that the movement to free all political prisoners is growing every day. This entire incident was a deliberate provocation. They wanted to break me. They wanted me to respond. There was enormous feeling for Angela everywhere in the world. We know that she is innocent. We want to tell that Pharaoh in Washington to let Angela Davis go free. What they're doing to her is an exaggerated form of what happens every day to black people in this country. What does it mean to be a criminal in this society? They are not going to kill her. They're not going to imprison her. We're going to free her. We're going to win her freedom. That was a documentary uh, on Angela Davis. Uh, the making of that documentary uh, mm -hmm. uh, the filmmaker approached you wanting to do what? Well, she was interested in making a film about the trial. I had uh, previously been aware of her work because she did a wonderful um, film on Shirley Chisholm, uh, Unbought and Unbossed. Uh, and I who ran for president? Who in ran what, for president? The first, uh, yes, black woman to run for president uh, in this in this country. Um, and I had been approached many times by people who wanted to do films, but I've uh, been reluctant, uh, uh, because I didn't think it would be very productive to have a film uh, primarily focused on me. Um, and I, I knew Shala wanted to tell the story of the trial, and, and that would also mean telling the story of the campaign that uh, developed all over the country and all over the world uh, around the demand for my freedom. And she did quite an amazing job of uh, retrieving archival footage. Um, and I've often pointed out, there were things that I did not know until she uh, made that film. I hadn't seen a lot of the archival footage, because, of course, I was in jail when uh, it was shown on television. Explain what you were imprisoned for and acquitted of. I was uh, charged with three capital crimes, murder, kidnapping and conspiracy. Uh, and I was acquitted on all three charges. Uh, uh, Weren't you in prison just down the road from us right here? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, on, on the way to the studio, I saw the uh, spot where the old women's house of detention uh, stood, which is right on the corner of Greenwich and uh, Sixth Avenue, uh, Avenue of the Americas. Uh, and, uh, yes, uh, the, the night I was— uh, uh, arrested, uh, I could hear the voices of people who had gathered uh, outside to call for my freedom. I suppose that's one of the reasons it's no longer in that spot anymore. It's on Rikers Island, uh, so that uh, the community does not have the same kind of access. And speaking of the Women's House of Detention, you've been speaking increasingly about what, uh, bringing feminism within an abolitionist frame and abolition within a feminist frame. Well, what do you mean by that? Absolutely. Um, well, uh, actually, I mean a number of things by that, uh, because uh, feminist perspectives, I think, are really important, uh, and not just re with respect to understanding how essential it is to look at uh, uh, women in prison, uh, even though women constitute a a relatively small um, a minority, one can uh, see the way the system functions a lot more clearly by looking at the, the convergence, for example, of institutional violence and intimate uh, violence, uh, also looking at the particular situation of, of, of trans prisoners. Uh, 
not only allows us to uh, recognize that this is a group that is perhaps more criminalized than any other group. Trans people are arrested and imprisoned more frequently than any other group in society, but it allows us to see the role that the prison system as a whole plays in upholding the binary notions of gender uh, in, in the larger society. So feminism, it seems to me, helps us to uh, reframe the issue of uh, imprisonment and the prison industrial complex uh, within um, within a within a, a, a larger uh, context, and we see uh, the the connections uh, uh, with. Uh, between the personal and the political, the uh, institutional and uh, uh, and the intimate, the public and, and the private. Aren't women the fastest growing population in prison? And all over the world, women constitute the fastest growing uh, uh, population in prison. But I think it's also important to point out that um, women are such a minority, because there are other ways of punishing women in the larger society. And I like to point out that violence against women, which is the most pandemic form of violence in the world, I mean, we talk about police violence, we talk about when we talk about racist violence, we think about um, street violence, Trayvon Martin, and so forth, and that's absolutely important uh, to recognize. But at the same time, the violence that happens in relationships is connected uh, with uh, that uh, 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 street violence, institutional violence, and intimate violence. And and when one looks at women's situation, it's important, it's essential to grasp that connection, which then uh, allows us to uh, have a different view on the, uh, the, the institution that is responsible for the incarceration of so many men, and especially black and Latino men. As we move into this International Women's Day, what gives you most hope? Well, I think... Um, I always find hope in struggle. I find hope in younger generations. Do you I'm, feel people have been demobilized under President Obama or are getting more active? I think we could have been much more active. And one of the problems, I think, was that uh, after this world historical uh, uh, election that took place, uh, we went home and decided that this one man in Washington would carry the ball for us, not recognizing that, actually, he was the president of the uh, imperialist, militarist United States of America. And I think that we might have had more victories during the era of uh, Obama's uh, uh, administration had we mobilized, had we continually put pressure on him and also created the possibility for for him to uh, uh, take more progressive stances. Do you still think there's hope in the next few years? Well, I think we have to act as if there is hope. 